So hi again, everyone. Um, welcome to the Akana demo. Apologies for the delay in getting started here. Um, there was a glitch in me getting the invitation to join here. So anyway, uh, we're here. Let's get started um, and uh, walk through you know, uh, what uh, we provide at Akana. Uh, give you a little bit about Akana before we jump into the product itself. OK, so let me just go to the next slide here. So a little bit about Akana. Uh, Akana is a uh, part of Power, uh, Perforce. And Perforce, uh, we are a global organization with the different products, primarily in the DevOps space around testing and quality and all of those kinds of aspects that you would expect from a DevOps organization. Akana is one of the divisions. We are global, as you can see here, across you know Europe, Asia, you know um, Australia, and of course U.S. and Latin America. So you know customers across the globe and offices to uh, around the globe, right? Um, we have a very high retention rate for our customers that shows a high level of uh, satisfaction. And we are growing uh, both organically and via acquisition. We seem to be acquiring companies every year, if not one, sometimes two. And uh, that's a little bit about Perforce. Um, a little bit more about Perforce. Um, you know, a lot of the Fortune 500 use not just Perforce's products, but also Akana, right? And so I'll we'll talk a little bit more about Akana as we get into the next uh, couple of slides here. Okay, but just to give you an idea, uh, very strong in the automobile space around a lot of, uh, you know, testing around uh, standards that uh, automobile uh, companies focus on. Okay. I'm not sure how interactive this is because obviously I can't hear anybody and I was hoping it would be a little more um, in interactive. But I guess if um, anyone has questions, uh, please uh, uh, post them into the chat window. So, you know, what do we provide, right? We're a leading provider of enterprise full lifecycle API management solution. And what does that mean, right? There's a lot more to an API management pl platform than just a gateway, right? And I think um, some of the typically the cloud vendors, you know, they just have you know a gateway without the full feature set that one would expect of a full lifecycle API management platform. And hopefully, you'll see that you know when we jump into the product, uh, we have. Uh, you know, we're one of the founders, literally, in a sense, in this space. You know, we started uh, approximately 20 years ago uh, just doing this. And so we've just uh, grown over the years uh, with customers in, you know, typically, you know, banking, financial services, some in hospitality. You know, it's, it's all different industries, including retail, which I didn't mention over there. All right. And uh, we support all the major deployment platforms. I mean, you can uh, deploy... Uh, Akana on premises. You can deploy it um, in the cloud, virtual private cloud, use our SaaS platform. We also have a mainframe solution. So there are actually two solutions that we provide uh, for API management. Uh, I'm not focused on the mainframe one. We have a separate team that really manages our mainframe solution. Um, but if anybody's interested in that, we can certainly have a one on one uh, session around that. So just want to mention the fact that we have that solution. Some quotes from some analysts, some customers, all of those things. You can see some customer names at the bottom. Hopefully, they're all uh, recognizable names to everyone on the call here. Um, these are just some. We have other organizations that are very well known that just don't allow us to use their logos, but uh, certainly uh, a wide uh, range of uh, customers, as you can see here. So let's drill into a little bit about what makes us unique, right? I mean, yes, we're API transformation, digital transformation uh, platform, but you know what's in it specifically that makes Akana, you know, what we think better than anybody else, right? So one of the things that's a requirement, if you listen to any of the analysts, is that you know to be an AP, considered an API management solution, you need to have a developer portal. But the question is, you know, what is a developer portal? And it sounds like a very simple question to answer, but it really isn't because there's a huge difference between what we provide at Akana versus 
a lot of the solutions that you see in the market, right? So when you know you hear this word develop a portal, it's important for you, especially if you're looking at uh, solutions or working with solutions, to really understand what that means. Because what that really means typically is that you have the ability to go in and define an API on the gateway that you are using, all right? That's a very limited point of view because when you really think about it, right? Uh, I mentioned DevOps earlier, it's becoming more and more prevalent that APIs are deployed as part of your CI CD pipelines, right? Um, it's becoming less common for people to actually go in and use the UI to create an API. And the last thing you want is for anybody to be creating an API in a production environment using your UI, right? I mean, that's just fraught with risk. Automation is a key part of it. So, you know, what am I doing by creating an API, right? The goal of that is really for your target audience, whether it's internal, whether it's external, you know, white label for specific partners, that the consumer of those APIs is the is the real target, right? And that consumer portal is not included in that definition of a developer portal, right? You'll hear some people refer to it as an API marketplace. And this is one of the huge differentiators of Akana that isn't fully appreciated sometimes because it's not apparent this difference. When you create that API in Akana, whether you're using our developer portal, as I described earlier, that's the one where you actually define the API, you provide the documentation for the API, recipes, all of those kinds of things. It's the finished product, right? It's what they call the API product. That is really the critical component of this whole thing, right? And what you get with Akana out of the box without writing a single line of code is that API marketplace. You can customize it to your heart's content, have the look and feel that you need. I mean, we have some of the biggest Fortune 500 uh, companies out there that have the Akana portal customized. You wouldn't know it's the Akana portal by looking at it, all right? But the key is, is that you don't have that separate step of publishing, right? Because that adds time to market issues. It adds skill set issues. There's a bunch of costs. And your time to market, which is your bi biggest uh, business advantage. And that's really one of the keys that I'm going to focus on during this presentation is really your time to market, right? That's what separates us from everybody else. And I'll, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes in more detail. Because the key with the corner really is that everything I'm going to show you and talk to you about, you don't have to write a single line of code, right? And that's you know one key feature. The other aspect now that we're seeing in many organizations is the fact that through various reasons, acquisitions, you know, you know, signing up with cloud vendors as kind of your cloud provider of choice, they get, you know, different gateways within the organization. And many portals out there don't really give you the option of supporting or documenting all of the APIs within your organization, right? So now you have this proliferation of gateways, proliferation of portals, and nobody really knows the single place to go, right, to get a list of all the APIs, something that they need. And again, you get back to this issue of somebody having to recreate something that already exists because they just didn't go to the right portal or they didn't know it existed, right? With Akana, you can actually document and test APIs that are not deployed on the gateway. So you can go to the portal, register an API that could be in a different gateway or not even on a gateway, maybe it's just part of some other platform. And, you know, you have everything in one place. Everyone can go to the Akana portal and find all the APIs within your organization. Right. And then there's very fine-grained access controls. Now, this may not apply to you if you're a very small uh, team, but typically, again, when you look at the profile of our customers, right, they have multiple development teams, sometimes uh, across geographic reason, regions, uh, sometimes just separated by walls within a building. But, you know, each one provides a different function, different um, you know, areas of the business that they're focused on. And you need to be able to manage that so that somebody from one line of business isn't uh, overriding your APIs or being able to edit your APIs or mess it up any uh, which way with security issues or any of those things, right? So 
all of these are really, you know, the, the portal is not a trivial aspect. I mean, it's, it's actually the main aspect today in terms of what we see in the market from, you know, our customers. So this is really a critical aspect. And, you know, I just wanted to highlight the differences between just using that word developer portal. That developer portal word has, you know, more connotations to it. And until you dig into it, you really wouldn't understand the differences between one solution and the other. Right. Then, you know, you get into analytics, right? I mean, at one point you get these APIs in, now you want to start looking at these APIs. You want to understand how do you use these APIs, right? How are they being used? You know, what's the latency? Are they performing the way you expect it? Are, are, are the consumers violating any of the contracts between, you know, provider and consumer because you've got SLAs defined, right? So, you know, this, those types of analytics are part of every platform out there in the market, right? You wouldn't really be an API management platform if you couldn't provide what we call operational analytics, right? And that is out of the box in the Akana platform, right? It's, it's table stakes. But, you know, you get into another level of analytics, which you call business analytics, right? And the idea behind business analytics is to be able to get insights into the business, right? Now, Typically, most organizations, even the ones we deal with our customers, they have data warehouses, data lakes, all of these kinds of things. They've got BI solutions. But sometimes the legacy platforms don't capture information that modern applications do, right? Some modern applications, mobile apps, if you're a banking or a retail um, you know, enterprise, you might uh, capture location information, right? You might capture device information. And some of the legacy uh, solutions you have would not have had that information, right? What Akana provides is a whole nother level of analytics on top of what I just described as operational analytics, where you have full control over elements of the request, the response, your environment. When I say environment, I'm talking about your gateways, your data centers, all of that. So you can now um, start gleaning business intelligence in a sense from that information. The example I always use is, you know, if you're a bank or a retail organization, for example, you typically know where your customers live, right? You probably ship to them. You have that account information, but you may not know where they hang out, right? After hours, maybe people hang out in a particular part of London or New York, any of the other cities, and you know the people hang out after work, right? And by using their devices, you suddenly find out, oh, they, they, everybody and you know a lot of your customers are in a particular part of town. And what that helps you do is you can target your marketing efforts to that area. You can build a retail location in that area. If you're a bank, you might open an ATM or any of those things after hours over there, right? So people can get access to cash if they need to, uh, even in this digital world. So that's you know where business uh, analytics comes into play, right? And it's another thing that's really uh, different about us. And what a lot of our customers do is that they use these policies that we provide that allows them to gr grab those pieces of information, and then they feed them into other platforms, right? So they, they just use Akana because now you're getting these pieces of information that you wouldn't have normally and just propagate it to other platforms as I described over here, right? So think about analytics again, just like I said with the portal, right? Portal is not a portal. Similarly, analytics is not analytics. There's more to analytics than just knowing how your API performs or what the latency is, what the throughput is, any of those things, right? Well, how many errors you've had and, you know, Things are if your platform is scaling, you know, all of those kinds of things. This is beyond taking it beyond that. Okay. Then we get into lifecycle management, right? Obviously, you've got different environments, right? You'll you create your APIs probably in your dev environment, then you go through some testing, you go through staging, you go to production, right? So of course that's a very common scenario with any any platform out there. But the question is, how do you move between those environments? Right? What are the rules? What are the checks and balances you have? How do people send put something into production? Right. So that's really the key here because one of the biggest security risks to organizations today really are APIs that are going into production that shouldn't be in production, right? Because you don't have enough checks and balances in the platform. Now, this is a, a double-edged sword. I think anybody who's worked um, through any kind of governance knows that, you know, it could be a bottleneck in your environment. But what's nice about the Akana platform is that the rules for governance are driven by metadata, right? So you can define any metadata in the portal, 
right? The portal that we already discussed. You can define the rules. And what happens is when people go in and create that API or define that API, whether they're using, you know, the platform APIs as part of the CI/CD pipelines, or they're using the UI, is that it will provide the appropriate sign-offs based on that metadata. So some APIs, you know, if something's got PII information in it, right, that API, right, would need to have maybe a security architect review it. Whereas if it's something that's just providing, you know, location of your ATMs or stores, perhaps you don't care, and you know, and it could just not require the security architect to be the bottleneck there. So the rules can be defined again without writing code in terms of you know how that API goes from one environment or one lifecycle state to the other, you know, in in a in an in a meaningful manner, right? In in an efficient manner, right? And that's really the key. And you can define custom roles, so it's not like suddenly you're using Akana names and people don't understand what the roles are or any of those things, right? So. It, it can be as lightweight as you want. It can be as heavyweight as you want. We do not prescribe how you should do it because we believe, you know, you know how your organization works the best. So this just plugs into your existing uh, processes. Okay. Then, you know, we get into deployment, right? Deployment, again, is, is tricky. What we're seeing today, right? Obviously, there's the big move to the cloud. You know, Microsoft came out with some record earnings yesterday, and uh, it continues to grow. However, there's also, if you look at uh, some of the analysts, especially something like Gartner, they'll tell you that even on premises, you know, the API management space grew something like 40% year over year, right? Well, uh, that's approximate. And so organizations, are, even Akana customers, are suddenly realizing that just moving everything to the cloud is not necessarily the best option, right? They have to pick and choose. Now they have tools to identify what the cost would be. You know, some APIs might be better in the in the VPC or in SaaS or you know some on premises. It depends also where the backends are. You know, performance wise, all of these different factors. You know, sometimes they're global. So how do you really manage these APIs in in a manner that is you know most efficient for you? And what happens if tomorrow your cloud costs go up and you want to come back on premises? So here's the thing with the Kana that again makes us different. We have the same product in our SaaS environment, on-premises, hybrid, right? What are the benefits here? All of our customers get the same solution at the same time, right? Now this also enables you to move back and forth. Today you have an API on uh, on premises. You want to move it to the cloud. Uh, I'll show this to you in the product when we get to the product. But you have this ability to define a topology and move APIs between those. So you can just as easily move something back from the cloud into your on-premises environment. Just a couple of clicks or use your uh, automation to you know, move APIs to wherever you want, right? And that just helps you, you know, not be, there's no vendor lock in here, right? Most would use any of the cloud vendors, it's yeah, you're locked into that cloud vendor. With Akana, you don't have any of that uh, vendor lock. So, you know, I bring in security as the last slide over here before we jump into the product. And the, the key reason I, uh, you know, I bring it in at the end is because I don't want you to think like, oh, security is not important. Security is the most important aspect, right? But today, security, you know, even that, you'll see that people think of that everybody's just got it because it's just a requirement. And it's not. It's not equal, right? One of the things that you'll see with the Akana platform is that makes, again, time to market much faster is that you don't have to worry about you know ordering your security policies right you don't even have to worry about selecting your security policies the metadata right we have rules based security policies you define the rules somebody comes in whether again using the platform api or the ui and they create that api based on the metadata that is mandatory on that api it will apply the appropriate security policies it completely automates that process. And I think we know that automation just reduces risk, which is why we are all moving to a more automated world in terms of development in other areas, right? And we support all the major standards. I mean, I don't want to repeat all of the things that's already on the slide there, but, you know, we've been doing this, as I mentioned, for a long time. So, you know, we've just been, you know, it's been one of our biggest trends. You can see what the analysts say about uh, Akana with security. We are, um, you know, 
pretty much, you know, I'll say number one in security because I know some of our customers have competing solutions uh, within the organization and they'll use those solutions internally when anything external facing goes through the Akana Gateway and platform, All right? So this is just one of the other big strengths. You know, do not think it's, don't take this for granted. You know, there's just um, a lot of benefits to the way we do things. Also, when you write up, when you look at Akana policies, they're point and click interfaces. So you don't have to keep uh, writing XML or any other things within those um, policies. You just uh, point, click, and attach them. You can, and by the way, you can not you can attach policies multiple different ways uh, to APIs within Akana. You can attach them at the organization level. So if you have an org structure, you know different organizations might be catering to different customers. So you might have different uh, security mechanisms that you want to use depending on who the target audience is. And so what you can do is you can just attach policies at the org level. All right, and then um, those get attached to all the APIs. And then, you know, if you ever had to make a change, you just change it once and then applies to all the APIs. You can also attach them via metadata, as I mentioned, and then, you know, you can go down to the operation level and change things. So uh, very uh, high, high secure uh, security with our platform. So. I would normally say are there any questions, but uh, I'm not sure how, let's see if there's anything in the chat here. I don't see anything. All right, so let's jump into the product here and let me share what I can uh, with you. And I'm guessing, let me figure out how to get to the next screen. Sorry, folks. Okay, let me share my screen again here. Okay, I assume you can see that. All right, I think you can based on what I'm seeing here. So, you know, when you install the Akana platform, what I'm showing you is kind of a local instance I have on my laptop here. So this is just kind of out of the box, right? And, you know, it's really hard to demonstrate what I showed you or, or spoke about in terms of these two aspects of the portal, right? There's that developer creation aspect, right? But then there's this API marketplace aspect. And so it's very important to understand that with the Akana platform, both are right there. And while it may not be immediately apparent to you, it's it's there. The, these, uh, the UI that you see is theme-based, so you can either extend our themes, create your own themes, any of those things, right? And there's a whole CMS built into the platform too. So no additional skill sets as CSS, JavaScript, just typical stuff that any UI developer would know, okay? So I'm going to log in here. Now you'll see right here on the login screen, all of this stuff can be customized. Our customers customize this. I can integrate with some LDAP thing, or I could just, uh, you know, I can turn these things on and off. I have a self-service option here. I can turn that on and off just through the settings, no code required, right? I'm going to start off by logging in as an administrator, all right? And as an administrator, obviously I can do anything within the platform. I log into a dashboard. It's a very simple UI in terms of the product itself. Um, as I mentioned, we have role-based access controls. So with the role-based access control, you know, you are not necessarily going to see everything, right? For example, because I'm an uh, admin, I see everything down here, including admin, groups, organizations. Whereas if you come in just as a consumer, you would have a limited view only based on, you know, what your role is, All right? Now, before I jump into anything here, let me just show you what an API looks like, right? So if I just do a search and look at all my APIs, you know, I've got a bunch of APIs that I've um, built earlier. So I've got, for example, this geocoding airport API, which is actually a, a, a an orchestrated API, which I'll just you know describe in a little bit um, uh, in a few minutes here. But you know, when you look at an API, right? I'm looking at it as, as an admin, right? 
but a consumer might come into kind of this consumer theme of my uh, portal here, right? And log in here, right? So I'm logging in here as, let me log in as Alex here, all right? And they can look at that API, right? Completely differently, right? So, you know, in fact, right? You notice that that API is not even visible to them, right? You don't see that API. So this is just shows you that you have very fine grained controls in terms of what people see for within an API, right? In fact, I can even go further in terms of what somebody sees, right? If you, if you look at this pet store licensed API, okay? If you look at it via this user, right? And I look at the, you know, let's say the documentation page of this API. So a little slow here. You see that, you know, this user can see all the operations, right? The, the API is pet store licensed. However, if I log in as a diff different user, right, into the same portal, right, and now I go in as Susan, right, and I look at that same API, right, and I go to the documentation tab or try to, you know, run, she only sees the get operations, right? That's how fine grained you can go with an API, right? It's not just looking at, you know, what APIs are visible. I already showed that to you but you can go down to the operation level. And the point is, is that try and do this with any portal where you have to create everything from scratch, right? Even if I give you some, you know, well-known CMSs like Drupal or something like that, right? To get this level of fine-grained control would require a tremendous amount of work. You have this out of the box in the Akana platform without writing a single line of code, right? Point and click interface, okay? So coming back here to my, uh, other view into the same portal, you'll see here that, of course, I have a lot more details here on the left-hand side based on the fact that I'm an API administrator and a you know, platform administrator. But within an API, you know, each one of these things gets turned on and off. You know, I have full you know, forum capabilities, ticketing capabilities, sending out alerts, all of those things, or alerts that are generated by the platform for the API. All of these details are in, available here. There's an analytics section, which we can come back to in a bit, which will tell me, you know, this is, again, what I was talking about in terms of operational metrics, right? Just basic stuff, throughput, average. I mean, this is not a production system. This is on my laptop. So obviously, you're not going to see a whole lot in here, right? And I can, I'll run some operations through in a few seconds, right? Um, then you have documentation, as I showed you earlier. But what's nice here is the documentation here is interactive, right? So if I expand this, I can actually send in a test request from here. You can see security, invoke, all of those things. But what's even nicer is that I also have a test client, right? Now, why would I need a test client, right? Because obviously, you know, most people use Postman or something like that, right? And certainly not knocking Postman. I use Postman myself, love it, right? But this test client has the intelligence to interact with the Akana gateway, right? So for example, if you notice on this API, right, it has some security policy on it, which is why this invoke option is grayed out, right? So this API just does a bunch of things, but let's just, you know, put in a local airport. Since uh, this is in New York, let's look at a New York airport, right, JFK. Now, I, uh, I have set up a contract between this API and an application, right, and a client, right? So. Uh, I select one of those, right? And you'll notice that this thing goes to green once it knows that it's a valid contract, right? It recognizes the fact that that uh, application or consumer that I set up is a registered consumer. And so this thing goes to green. Now, once I click on that, right, I should get back a response and I get back this response here. What's nice about this is that now I know exactly how to send that request in. Right, I know what my authorization header should look like, all of those things, because this is a custom Akana policy, right? So the idea is, is that now you can take this, you can save this in Postman and continue to use Postman because that's your favorite tool, but it just makes this whole process really easy, right? So it depends on what you're trying to do and which APIs, right? Because it has all of that intelligence built in, for example, I have another API here, and let's see if I still have it set up here correctly. But I have this API here, right? This API is, is kind of similar API. It's also got some airport information. If I go to the test client here, 
Um, actually, I don't have this one set up with the right policies, but I'll, I'll show you kind of what an OAuth policy would look like um, in the platform uh, right here, right? But let's go about creating an API with this UI, right? So let's see what it takes to create an API. So you have a couple of different approaches in here, right? And I'll sh again, this is a huge differentiator with us in a few seconds. Uh, hopefully, it'll be clear. I have the option of just defining an API from scratch, right? This is an API first approach, right? API days API, right? I don't have an endpoint at this point, right? So that's why it says if known, right? This metadata over here is not just metadata. This metadata drives decisions within the platform. That's what I meant by rules-based approach. You can define any metadata. This is just a sample, which is why I created this field here. Right, just to show you that you can create whatever you want. But and you can determine what is mandatory, what is optional, but each one of these things has a, a different meaning. Right. So for example, I can have a cluster of gateways where anything that has PII information gets deployed. Right. So this would drive that process. We don't have enough time here and enough of a setup to show this to you, but we're happy to show this to you uh one on one whenever uh if you're interested. So this, in this case, you know, I'm just going to say none in the interest of time and click on save. And I'll show you what happens when this changes, right? Now, what happens here is that when I click on save, I don't even need to know the Swagger specification to be able to define an API, right? What this does is that when I clicked on save, it's creating kind of a stub for that. And now I have a graphical editor that allows me to define my API. I can add other resources, it starts off with a get. I can put in a post, put, delete, patch, whatever you, depending on what you're trying to do. And now I can edit each one of these operations to add whatever details I want. All right. So this is all out of the box. However, you know, I'm not knocking those who know the specification, right? You can go right in here and work with the swagger, right? It's a bi directional editor, right? You can work in the swagger, you work in the editor, it doesn't really matter. Again, I think this is a big differentiator. Very few solutions out there have that. Okay. But let's say you do have, you know, an API already defined, right? You've already got the back end. Now you want to create kind of just the proxy and deploy it on the Akana Gateway. Here's where you get kind of that benefit I was talking about about the integrated portal. Right. I'm going to select um, there's a publicly available API from the FAA, which gives you airport information. It's one I use all the time, which is why you've seen some examples of that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, you know, this one is externally facing. What this does is it applies an OAuth policy to my API, all right? And then I'm going to say, okay, forget it's got no PII information and this is just any value here, all right? But you're going to see some actions that happen because of this. Now, one of the things I want to point out again in the interest of time here is that I've got multiple options here in terms of how this API gets. Is it a straight proxy in terms of how I'm defining my API product? Or am I defining my API product as kind of a combination of different backend endpoints, right? So it depends because that API product is really what that consumer is going to say, right? So here's the difference. When I'm creating something here, I'm focused on that final product, right? It's not just something that as a developer I'm creating and it's somebody else's job to publish out for users, right? And then I'm gonna select registered users here. When I click on save here, what happens is that not only am I registering this API here in my Akana portal, it's actually deploying it on the Akana gateway too, right? It's not only a, a, a done that, but what it's also gone and done is it's gone and attached se security policies to this API. So if I go in here, you'll see that it's got my OAuth security policy attached to it automatically. That's just driven by that metadata value, right? So you can see that all of this automation is built into the platform. I don't have to write any code around this. Now, if I go to my test client, as you saw earlier, what you'll see here is firstly, I don't have anything to access it with, so I can't really invoke this API. But if I wanted to invoke this API, I would have to go and create a contract. Again, keep in mind, I'm playing all the roles over here. Typically, this, this step would be done by somebody who's a consumer of this API, right? I don't want to log in, create a different account, all those things. So they would typically come and they'd see this access button and they would be able to go ahead and, you know, they, they define their own app. I'm, I'm not going to the step of defining an app. It's very simple to define an app. It's a one page thing. You just click add app, right? And then 
select the version, click next. And this is where there's governance, right? You just don't want everybody accessing your APIs. You can, you know, maybe there's an SLA associated with, again, typically uh, I'm an admin, so I, I have all these choices that somebody might not have, right? And here, what happens at this point, you see this access pending, email notifications go out, right? I actually probably have them in my inbox right now saying, hey, you know, you need to approve this, right? Depending on whose role it is to approve it. You can look at the connection request, click on approve, confirm that, and then you activate the contract, right? So you, you've approved the fact that they can use it, and now I'm activating the contract between the provider and consumer, right? So if I go back to that API I just created, right, which is the um, FAA airport status zero, what you'll see here now in the test client is some different behavior, right? First, if I click setup, it'll recognize the fact that I have that contract already, right? But you notice even after selecting that, it's still grayed out, which wasn't the case in the initial case, right? So what I'm going to do is if I click on security, guess what? Oh, look at that. It recognizes all of these details. It knows what grant types have been associated with that, all of this stuff, all done for you out of the box, right? Uh, keep it simple. I'll just say client credentials, get token, or I could, you know, if I really wanted to, I can go to authorization code and get token, and you know, this will go out to my local uh, LDAP instance. I've got uh, Open DJ and stuff running in here. I can sign in there uh, and get my token, right? And then go through, you know, authorizing the application tells you what scopes and all of those details in here. Again, all of these screens are customizable. Okay, let's say authorize, and I get my token. If I want to use a different grant type, client credentials, and I'll show you how easy it is to set all of this stuff. Click next, click finish, invoke, right? If I had to, and I could get the details. So that's how simple it is to set up an API, right? So you, I'm doing this all via the UI, but typically, this would be your dev environment where you're working, if, if at all, right, in the UI. A lot of our customers today do not use this UI to create the API. All they care about is this UI where somebody comes in, right, and looks at an API. And if I'm still logged in here, right, and look at all APIs, I should now see this FAA airport status zero, right? So that API that I just created shows up. And this is really where the focus is now. Right, at least amongst the Akana customer base, because the part that I showed you in this portal here in terms of creating this API was just, you know, is typically just done by automation. Now, here's the difference, right? Why do I go to this UI? This is the, a, another Akana theme, right? You can use either one of these themes. There are a bunch of themes in the platform. There's a third theme here, which I haven't gotten into as yet, right? But the point is, is that this theme is very security focused, even more so. I mean, not that this isn't. But in this particular UI, you do not have the option, even if I'm an administrator, which I am, to create an API. That option doesn't exist. What that does is that it ensures that any APIs going into your production tenant, right, or your production environment are only there via automation and the rules that you've defined, right? So nothing gets into your portal, internal, external, whatever it may be, okay? Now, here's the other thing, right? I just created this API, but what you'll notice here, and something I haven't spoken about, is kind of these environments. Now, because this is my laptop, I've only defined two environments, dev and prod, right? Obviously, that's not realistic, right? Typically, you'd have dev, QA, staging. You might have multiple prod environments, right? And that's kind of where, you know, if we had enough time, I would show you what would happen with PII versus no PI, create multiple APIs and promote them. Because what it would show you is that I have specific gateways defined for my PII environment. And the API that has PII as yes would only get deployed into those gateways, right? That would be in a more secure location potentially, right? Which nobody has access to. So you have all of those controls here. But let's see what happens over here, right? Let me click on promote, right? And now what I'm doing is I'm taking this. API that I just created and promoting it to the next environment, which in my case, as I mentioned, I just have dev and prod, right? And right here, you know, I'll find out what's going on. But behind the scenes, there's a bunch of things going on in terms of, you know, who needs to sign off, all of those things. You notice it says promotion pending, right? I know what the process is since I created it. But, you know, what I have, I have another theme here, 
which I'll just start up here. And this is, you know, we call it our DevOps theme. It's really not important what we call it, but I'm logging in here again as an administrator. And this is another theme into the same platform, right? And what you notice here, right up there on the top left, right? It's saying, hey, there's an API pending approval. If I click on this, I get a, even additional details. It says, hey, what's the role required? Oh, security architect, all right? You can define these roles. I mean, this is just me calling it security architect, right? If your organization has a different name for that, you can call it whatever you want, right? So let me go ahead and approve this thing, right? It says it's successful now. If that was it, this will change to promote it, right? I can always see over here again as an administrator, I can go back to the request and, you know, I see it's all clear and nothing pending. And in a few seconds, you know, if everything uh, went smoothly, this will get promoted into the prod environment, right? So you see that it's promoted to prod. Now, if I click on prod here, what it does, it'll take me right to that API in the prod environment. Right. I'm not logged in, so I'm only seeing these, you know, limited options here. Uh, and that's what a consumer would typically see. But let's go in as an administrator and see what's happened here. Because there's some really cool stuff that's happened behind the scenes here. Right. When I set this API up in the dev environment, remember I've gone back to dev for a second here. What you'll see here on the details page, right, is that when I go to the OAuth details here, when I created this API, it automatically went to my OAuth dev domain, right? Because I probably have different ones in dev and production and things like that. But when it promoted, right, and I go to the details page here, right, and I look at the OAuth details in here, right? Look at what it says, OAuth prod, right? So it changed that, right? This is kind of what I mean by the rules-based approach, right? The policies, everything, it just gets taken care of for you, right? And the point here really is if you look at the time to market with this platform that I've just shown you in terms of creating an API, an API product, deploying it, pushing it to the, to the, to the gateway, the consumer gateway, right? I mean, that API is here. I mean, it's, it's everywhere, right, based on the rules defined. So. That's really what I mean by time to market when it comes to the Akana platform, right? This is just one aspect, right? And if we look at the policies in the in the platform too, let's just go and look at that for a second, right? So if I go in here, go to my organizations, I don't want to add an organization here, but let's just go to my root level organization. And you'll see here I've got a bunch of different policies in here, right? But what I meant by the fact that you don't have to write code in a lot of our policies is the fact that you know when I have these policies, like I have detail auditing and basic auditing, you'll see that they're both operational policies. They're both of a type called auditing service policies. So you can create variations of this. But here's the key. I don't have to write any code on this, right? It's a point and click interface, right? And most of the Akana policies, unless it's a specific policy that you know using you know regex or JSON path or XML path or something like that to do something very custom. All of these are just out of the box, right? You don't have to write. And so when you go in and if you wanted to create a policy, right, you just click on add here, you, you know, give it some name, you know, API days policy. And then you select the category, right? So you have SLAs, which are the SLP kind of type policies, but mostly focused on operational policy. And you'll see this is out of the box, right? This is all whether, I mean, and here's the thing, we support a lot of the legacy stuff which large organizations still have, whether due to acquisitions or stuff they've got. So you have all of those capabilities built into the platform, right? So Jose policies, all of these things, message uh, auditing, message uh, validation, right? And so on and so forth. So there's a lot of these things just built into the Akana platform, right? So if you want support for JSON schema models right here, right? Again, out of the box, right? You can define your JSON schema models, use them within your APIs, right? So everything here is really built into the platform for you ready to go. Now, you know, I've shown you some of the, the security stuff around policies, you know, I've shown you some of this uh, stuff in your message validation that you can do with JSON schema model. But, you know, how do I define all of these domains, right? Look at this. Right, right within the Akana platform, you know, and this is my dev environment. So I got OAuth dev, went to product, you see OAuth, right? 
But look how easy it is to define my OAuth provider, right? I can specify which grant types I want to expose. Do I want to support Jot? Um, you know, all of those things are just built into the platform, right? Point and click interface, don't have to write code. And how, what else do we support out of the box? You know, external OAuth provider, Facebook, uh, we do some special integrations with Ping, which is why we've um, provided that separately. But, you know, our customers use Okta, they use Auth0, they use uh, Forge Rock, all of those without having to write any code in the Akana platform. All right. So there's a lot, as you can see, that just makes life a lot easier within the Akana platform, right, in terms of, you know, creating APIs, deploying APIs, all of this stuff is just taken care of you, promoting them, lifecycle. And so coming back to what I mentioned earlier, full lifecycle API management is all built in here, right? And if I go in here and just send in a few requests onto this particular API, just so you can see what the analytics are like, all right? Let's just go in here quickly because we're running out of time. I'm going to wrap up. So let's put in a few different airports here. Let's do LAX for Los Angeles. Let me just quickly do the setup here. And say, and let's just run a few requests through here, right? Right, and look, I just violated an SLA I set, right? So I deliberately set this to five transactions per minute, just so you could see that I can violate it. Right? Typically, you'd have a you know much higher throughput, but you know you can also set this up in multiple ways because what happens is you might have in your before you onboard a customer, right? When I say a customer, an application, whatever it is you might have them go against kind of a test environment versus their production environment. And what you'll see here under implementations, I have the ability to define sandbox and live endpoints. So maybe on your sandbox endpoint is much less, you ensure that everything's working and then you transition them to your live endpoint, which is your production endpoint, right? But now that I sent those requests in, what you'll see here under my logs is that I have all of those transactions in here, right? And you can look at the details of any one of these. The red's obviously not successful. And if I click in here, right, what you'll see is that I can get the entire process that happened in here. So actually what's happening in this API is a lot more than just a proxy to a backend API, right? I'm actually calling two APIs, right? And how does that work? So that's another pattern that I didn't focus on when I clicked on add API. So let's talk about this, right? What I did was I created a proxy. Now I'm going to show you an orchestration. And then a physical service is where you would register an API that's not deployed on the Akana Gateway. So this is what I meant when I was talking about the portal, the ability to support APIs that are not part of you know, your platform necessarily, right? So what does this orchestration look like, right? Let's go back and look at this API. So what happens on this API, if you look at it, I have a single operation, but on this operation, you see I have the edit live process, right? And that's kind of what's happening in this process, right? I get the request in, I look at that request, I grab the three letter code from there. Then what I'm doing is I'm calling the Google geocoding service, I'm calling the, the FAA's uh, airport uh, status service. And then what I'm doing is I'm combining them together into a customer re response using a little bit of JavaScript, you know, all of these things just, you know, I'm not the best coder in the world, but you know, you can probably do this in a couple of lines and create a customer response and send that back out, right? So you have full control over what you want to do, whether you want to invoke multiple APIs, one API, you know, all kinds of stuff. We support free marker, templating language, XSLT, all of those things all built into the platform. All right. So we have five minutes uh, or, or, or so left here. So let me just wrap up in a few minutes here and see if there are any questions. Uh, hopefully this uh, can keep this at least a little interactive. It sounds odd doing a demo without any feedback. Um, so let me go back to the... Hopefully you can see my screen. Yes, I think you can. And go back here, right? So that's pretty much, you know, that's not a complete demo. The idea was there to kind of give you highlights, kind of show you the ease of use of the Akana platform. That was really my goal today. Uh, and I think I'm kind of really in a dark room here. But um, hopefully that came through loud and clear, right? We are happy to do demos, of, you know, one-on-one -on -one with whoever's interested, dig into it more deeply. If you want to partner with Akana, happy to have that too. But, you know, the, the concept of speed, I don't think I need to make it, right? There are people out there, names that I'm sure you all recognize that talk about this, right? It's not about size. It's not about, you know, when that opportunity is there. It's about how fast you can move, right, in terms of accomplishing your goals.
right? We see this every day in our own lives, right? Even if you look at uh, things around us, right? You remember when Uber came out, it wasn't that long after that. Suddenly there was Lyft, then there was the Chinese ones, then there were the European ones, then there were ones in Asia, right? Everybody copies you, right? But what what's the word that everyone uses? Use Uber, right? So you just become synonymous with that particular capability. So, you know, if you don't believe me about time to market, that's fine. Hopefully these names out here would convince you that, you know, speed, ease of use, and ease of use is tied to speed, right? Because if something is hard, yes, you can build your skill set and you can learn everything and do everything manually. I'm sure you don't need the Akana platform. I'm sure there's people on here who have the skills to do this all on their own. But if you really, you know, want to do this in, an, in a tried and trusted and tested way, you know, it's already done for you, all right? Um, to follow up, right? If you wanted to play with the Akana platform, you can sign up for a free trial, right? Uh, we have two free trials, right? There's just a generic free trial where you can go and play with the platform. But we also have one very specific to Open Banking PSD2, which is kind of the theme of this uh, event at API Days, right? So you can, you know, certainly go there. And then there's a, all the documentation on the product is at docs.akana.com. Feel free to go there and look at all the documentation capabilities. It's very comprehensive in terms of what we offer within the Akana platform. Okay. And then lastly, we are giving away a $200 Amazon gift card. And for any of the attendees, feel free to go to the Akana booth. We have a booth as a sponsor of the event, and you can register for a chance to win. So that's pretty much it, everyone. Thanks for attending. Hopefully it was valuable and uh, hope we can engage uh, post the show. But uh, let me see if there are any questions out here. I don't see anything in the chat. Um, so that's, I believe, the end. I think I've gone past the time, actually. But anyway, um, th thanks, everyone.